Okay, we're at Sudley Springs Ford, not Sudley Ford. Sudley Ford is the stream crossing on Bull Run, which is a few hundred yards away from us and outside the park today. Uh, this stream is actually Ket Harpin Run. It's one of the tributaries of Bull Run. It joins Bull Run about 70 yards down to your right, a very short distance away. So just around the bend there is Bull Run itself. This area around Sudley Church and the surrounding community, uh, the buildings around it uh, were being used for a hospital space. Uh, this area was to the rear of the Union lines and they would send back their wounded throughout the day. So Union surgeon, uh, the Elmer Gruder uh, would uh, take over the church, would clear out uh, the sanctuary, and they begin to use that for space for tending to the wounded. Uh, there would be close to 300 who would be treated there uh, at the church and, in the, and, in, and around the church uh, in the day and days that followed uh, the fighting here uh, at uh, First Bull Run. The, um, of course, the, the numbers of wounded arriving there would exceed the space they had at the church. And so uh, Magruder would send uh, his men across the Sudley Road uh, to this neighboring property here and would begin to uh, clear out the space in the house and outbuildings that were over here to use those also uh, for, uh, for space for the wounded as well. Uh, so you can imagine the, the hundreds that would have been brought back here to be tended to uh, in the aftermath of the fighting on Matthews Hill and Henry Hill uh, during the course of the Battle of July 21st. Among those brought back here would be uh, Colonel John Slocum of the Second Rhode Island and also his major uh, Sullivan Ballou. Uh, how many have seen the, uh, the Ken Burns series on PBS about the Civil War? If you've seen that series, you've no doubt heard uh, the letter that uh, that Ballou wrote to his, his wife uh, just before the battle and uh, how he wrote very movingly about, about uh, his premonitions on the, on the eve of battle. Uh, he would uh, be among those wounded in the fighting on Matthews Hill, actually very early in the fighting on Matthews Hill, and as it turns out, his wound would be mortal. Uh, he would be uh, brought back here to Sudley Church uh, both he and Colonel Slocum would, uh, would die of their wounds and they would be buried uh, nearby. Uh, eight months after uh, the fighting, in March of 1862, the um, governor of Rhode Island, Governor William Sprague, who actually had been present in the field with the army that day. Sprague had accompanied the army onto the battlefield. He had accompanied his state's troops, the uh, 1st and 2nd Rhode Island, uh, onto Matthews Hill. Uh, even though he was not a member of the military, he was a de facto aide that day. He'd come out to, uh, to observe his, uh, his state's troops' uh, participation in the battle. And so he came back eight months later with an entourage of about 70 people, 70 men, to uh, recover the bodies of his state's troops from the battlefield because they'd been buried here on the field and left uh, after the Federals uh, left, uh, left the area. They, uh, as they came back to the battlefield, to the Sudley area, uh, they would uh, learn very uh, sobering, very uh, macabre uh, news. Um, they'd be approached by a young African-American girl who would tell them that uh, Colonel Slocum's body was gone, uh, that Confederates had, uh, had exhumed the remains and had burned them. And so she showed them the place where this had happened. Uh, they went down and they found a place, a long bull run, somewhere not far from us, exactly where we're not, we're not sure. Uh, and they found some charred remains there on the bank. They also uh, extracted from the trees a couple of shirts. But the shirts, as they examined them, appeared to have been shirts that, that belonged to Major Ballou and not to the Colonel. They went back to the grave site to investigate. They found the, where the bodies had been buried and they began to probe to find out what was left in the grave shafts. Uh, they, as they uh, dug into the grave shafts, they found the still identifiable body of Colonel John Slocum where they had buried him. The grave of Major Ballou was empty. Uh, the Confederates had, in, had intended 
apparently, to exhume the body of the colonel and to desecrate the grave, but they had excavated the wrong remains. They had actually excavated Major Ballou instead. Uh, what few remains they could find of Ballou, uh, they would remove. They would take Ballou, Slocum, other Rhode Island troops' remains and take them back north for, for final burial there uh, in their home state. Uh, but the, um, this uh, rather brutal treatment of the uh, dead from the battle uh, gives you a sense of how this early in the war there was a coarsening of people's sensibilities at, at this early stage of the war. Uh, the uh, local inhabitants, of course, had not taken part in that. Uh, they were very clear about who had, who had done this. There was a, according to the members of the Sully community, the, these were troops from the 21st Georgia who had been, they're actually very careful to say this was, these weren't Virginia troops that did this. These were Georgian troops that did this. Uh, whether that's true or not, we've never found a corroborating account from Georgia troops that described this incident, but it is an example of of the brutality of, of war uh, reflected in, in how the, uh, the remains were treated uh, here at Sudley in the, um, in the months following the action here at First Manassas.